Welcome to Pieces for My Puzzle. I am your host, Nikki Ship, and I'm excited to be sharing with you my life with a son on the spectrum. This podcast is for anyone who is looking for quick tips and perspective, but most of all, for hope and inspiration. So sit back, relax, and let's put the pieces together. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Pieces for My Puzzle. I am your puzzle master, Nikki. Thank you so much for joining us today. Last week, we talked about going to the dentist and how to make a dental visit a happy visit. Um, Definitely some great tips in that episode, so if you did not tune into that episode, please do. This week, we're going to talk about IEP terminology. Now, I know we've talked about a couple other episodes, uh, in a, excuse me, in a couple other past episodes, we've talked about IEPs, um, specifically IEPs and finding an advocate, and also how to roadmap an IEP. But I think it's really important to understand the terminology. And one of the things that we were hearing from a lot of people that we've been talking to is, I just don't understand some of the jargon. So I'm going to break down... Uh, just a few definitions, and they are lengthy. So if you are listening in today uh, or sitting at your desktop or you know watching YouTube, grab a pen and paper because you might want to write some of these terms down. And this will also help you to just understand some of the terminology when you co- go in and walk into an IEP. I'm going to get my glasses on here, and I even have some note cards. So for those of you watching today, you'll see that I have a little stack of green note cards. I actually made these a while ago when I was trying to learn about IEPs and trying to understand the terminology. And for without getting in too long of a story, we've we've had to go – we've had some really hard trips that we've had to take down the IEP road – with my son. And so I, in order for me to understand, and because I'm such a researcher, me having these cards really helped me to understand what some of this terminology was and what it meant. So it's important that you under you understand what your IEP team is talking about because you are part of the IEP team. So keep that in mind. And you'll be able to also ask more calculated questions by having an understanding of some of these terms. The first one I'm going to talk about is what we call um, IDEA, and that's an acronym. It's I-D-E-A, just like it sounds, IDEA. And what that stands for is Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. That is a mouthful. Um, It is actually our nation's educational law. And IDEA was first passed actually in 1975, and this law has been revised Um, and and over the years, and it helps guide how special education and related services are provided to children with disabilities in the U.S. The reason why this is important is that in order to get an IEP, you have to fall under a category, and those categories are listed under IDEA. States can develop their own educational policies and procedures based on what IDEA requires per state, and policies or procedures that are not considered, or excuse me, that are not consistent with IDEA's provisions, they must have those policies and procedures in place. In order to get an IEP, your child needs to fall under one of these 13 categories under IDEA. And autism is one of those 13 categories. So that's how you can kind of understand that the initial process has to start under IDEA. So it sounds weird saying idea because um, (laughs) the reason why I say it sounds weird saying idea because I just think, oh, it's an idea, but it's actually an acronym. So think of it that way. The other term, the next term I want to talk about is what is is also an acronym called FAPE, F-A-P-E, FAPE. And that stands for Free Appropriate Public Education. It means uh, special education and related services are provided at the public's expense under public supervision and direction without charge. Every child, every child is eligible for a free, appropriate public ed- education. Okay. Um, so it must meet the standards of a state education agency. 
including the requirements of an appropriate preschool, elementary school, secondary school in the state. Okay, I know that sounds really confusing, but what it's basically saying is that every child is eligible for a free education. Okay, and that's important because if, let's say you run into a scenario where you feel, and this has happened to me with my son, where you feel that there's a little bit of a force out. The school that Drayson was at previously, it was very apparent to me that they were trying to force him out of that school and into another school or to force us to do something else. And they made things extremely difficult for us. When that happens, you can basically say that that's a violation of FAPE. It's a violation. They should be providing this education to your child. So when you start to gather evidence of that not being appropriate, you start to see data lacking or they can't justify why they're making um, a goal change or things like that, you can actually exercise that right. So it's really important to know that. The next term is called MET, M-E-T. And MET is actually also really important. And sometimes there's confusion between MET and IEP. So MET stands for multi multidisciplinary evaluation. This is going to be a bunch of tongue twisters for me today. Um, and MET is a team of professionals responsible for evaluating a child, sus- uh, a child that is suspected of having a disability. So if your child does not have a diagnosis of, let's say, autism, you need to go through evaluation to see if there is an actual diagnosis. So think of MET as your diagnosis. Now, if an evaluation is requested in the school, um, here in the state of Arizona, um, they have a 60-day timeline for it to be completed. And that's per the state of Arizona. So if you are not in the state of Arizona, check your state guidelines to see what that timeline is. So if you request an evaluation for them to be evaluated for a diagnosis, they have a certain amount of time in order to complete that evaluation. And for Arizona, it's 60 days. Um, This is, like I said, different than an IEP, and you have to have a MET first in order to uh, get the IEP to start taking place. And then, of course, the the big term that we always hear is IEP. If you're not familiar with that one already, um, it stands for Individualized Education Program. It is a general term that's used basically to uh, get an education plan developed for your child that that falls under one of the categories of IDEA. So like I said, autism is one of those 13 categories. And so for Drayson, we had to write up um, an education program to help him. And it should include a statement of the child's present levels of academic achievement and functional performance. It should be able to list in there what your child can and can't do and what the what some of the uh, solutions will be to, in order to have that taken care of. It also needs to include a statement of measurable goals annually. Every every year the IEP will be revised annually. So a statement of measurable goals it needs to include. How are they measuring these goals? How are they going to gather this data? It includes academic and functional goals designed. So it should have both. It must meet uh, it meet each chi- each of the child's other educational needs um, as a result of the child's disability. So this is the time during the IEP where you're able to explain more of the expanded needs that your child that your child has, and it's a pretty lengthy um, definition. And when I, some of these definitions that I'm reading to you right now, I mean, I know you guys can't see this note card, but it's like one A, two A, two B. There's lots of different sub definitions under the general term. I am going to post a link in the show notes too from um, a an organization called Parent Center Hub, and they have some great, uh, a great layout of what these terms mean. So to read more, uh, more of the breakdown about IEP and these other terms, be sure to go and reference that in the show notes. And I, like I said, I'll, I'll provide that because these definitions are pretty extensive. Um, the next one is called LRE, and LRE stands for Least Restrictive Environment. 
And ideas provisions with respect to LRE are not a definition per se, but they are nonetheless very important to know. The conceptual core of ideas LRE provisions are that it should include something general, meaning it has to include the state policies and procedures in there. And each public agency must ensure that it to the maximum extent appropriate, children with disabilities, including children in public or private institutions or other care facilities, are educated with children who are non-disabled. This is really big, especially if you're trying to encourage integration, if you're trying to encourage more social opportunities. And so your child should be in the least restrictive environment. Again, one of the things that we ran into with Drayson was that he was being taken out of the classroom, <clears throat> of course for his specials, but he was being taken out of the classroom a lot. A lot more than I felt that he should be being taken out of the classroom, and that, can, that could eventually affect him socially. And so LRE is something that you will want to look at within, within your IEP. There's, of course, a, there's a general term called related services, and related services is exactly that. It means transportation and such developmental, corrective, and other supportive services that are required to assist your child with a disability to benefit, for, uh, to benefit in their education. So related services can fall under a pretty lengthy category. It's very, very general, but I'm going to read some of them here. So it can include... Speech language, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and audiology services, interpreting services, uh, psychological, physical, and occupational therapy, recreation. It can also fall under counseling, uh, orientation, and, mo and mobility services, medical services for diagnostic or evaluation purposes. And it, uh, it will also, it should also include related services, uh, should also include school health services, school nurse services, social work services in schools, and parent counseling and training. There are exceptions to these services that are listed, and a further breakdown, like I said, is also explained in that the link that I'm going to post in the show notes. But just so you know, related services is such a general term, but anything in addition to that your child might need, it should be listed in related services. And then, of course, the last term is supplementary aids and services, and this is basically another expanded definition. So IDEA defines, I'm going to read this verbatim, IDEA defines supplementary aids and services as follows. Supplementary aids and services means aids, services, and other supports that are provided in regular education classes other education-related settings, and in extracurricular, extracurricular and non-academic settings to enable children with disabilities to be educated with non-disabled children to the maximum extent appropriate in accordance with the law. And again, that is a very general definition, but there is flexibility in that, and that's why any other additional aids that need to be provided, uh, I think at one time we were talking about using an AAC device with Drayson when he was younger, and um, that should be included in the supplementary aids and services portion. And then I think I said the last one, but I, I, I'm just kidding. We have got one more. Um, the last one is transition services. And so transi transition services means a coordinated set of activities for a child with a disability that is designed to be within a result-oriented process. Again, I know that sounds really confusing, but anytime um, we have to look at, and again, I'm going to read this verbatim so that I don't make it even more confusing trying to give you my personal definition. It basically is focused on improving the academic and functional achievement of the child with a disability to facilitate the child's movement from school to post-school activities, including post-secondary education, vocational education, integrated employment, including supported employment, continuing an adult education, adult services, independent living, or community participation. 
So depending on the age of your child, one of the conversations that might need to be taken, might need to take place is about transition services. So this is literally, folks, the Reader's Digest of terms, okay? And it's, it's this is such a, um, uh, I shouldn't even say Reader's Digest. I'm, I'm thinking of um, the, you know, short notes, basically. Well, I can't even remember the term. There used to be a term in school that we used to call um, short notes. But anyway, um, this is such a condensed version. So I highly encourage you guys to please make sure that you're doing your due diligence and you're, uh, you're reading these definitions and understanding how they work because it's going to be so important for you and imperative for your child to get the right, the right and correct services that they deserve and that they need. And it'll also help ensure the success of your child down the IEP road. If you feel the need that you need help navigating more of this terminology or even understanding the process or having somebody with you, my biggest suggestion also is to make sure maybe to reach out to an advocate, um, see if there's an advocate that can help you, or even a special needs attorney. And I have to be honest with you, we have both. We, we have a special needs attorney and an advocate that are just fantastic and we love working with them. And they've also been able to really help explain a lot of this process to me to help me understand it a lot, a lot more clearly. At the end of every episode, we want to do a story highlight. So if you have a story that you would love to tell us, please email us at info at piecesformypuzzle.com. If we decide to feature your story on our show, I'm actually going to send a little gift out to you as a thank you for allowing us to share it. And we'll contact you and let you know when it's going to be aired on. Today, I'm just going to kind of tell you a quick story in relation to an IEP session with Drayson. And it's more of a personal story for me, but I felt that it was uh, just appropriate considering the topic that we're talking about today. But I didn't even know what idea or FAPE was actually sitting in an IEP. And it wasn't until I retained an advocate that I realized that I had more rights and that Drayson had more rights um, to, to his IEP than I realized because I didn't understand these terms. So before I got an advocate, no one in the, on the IEP team told me what these terms mean. And I think that this is the difficult part is that and it was something that I said to, I remember to the IEP team, is that no one explains this to you. And you walk into a meeting and they tell you all these things and, you, and it sounds great, but you're really not sure if it's accurate or correct or not. So, um, so for me, that was a big eye opener. And I remember very vividly finally asking what FAPE meant. And what was upsetting about it was the the school principal happened to be sitting in on this conversation and she could not articulate to me what FAPE was. She couldn't articulate to me what IDEA was. And that's when I realized that there was a bigger problem here and that even, even her, I understand that she was the principal and not in the speci special education realm, but to, to not even understand what that terminology meant to help educate me and bring awareness to me was, was really upsetting. So I guess the moral of the story is, um, you know, educate yourself and it's, it's really up to you. It really is up to you. You are your child's biggest advocate. Again, if you have a story that you would like to share with us, please email the show in at info at piecesformypuzzle.com. We would love to hear it. This concludes our episode for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well if you haven't already. And if you like what you're hearing, please spread the word to others so that we can help more friends and family and the autism community uh, bring more awareness, excuse me, to the autism community. And also feel free to give us a good rating on your preferred podcast platform of choice. Until next time, keep working on your puzzle. And remember, you don't have to have it all solved in a day. Take care. Bye.